also the Kodesh on Sanya and thank Rabbi Shai for the uh, opportunity to be able to, uh, to, to, to speak with you and to, uh, to share um, a few ideas and uh, to elicit your, uh, your reactions. Just to briefly state the, 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 the obvious, what, what's a truism, that the, the challenge in the teaching Amuna is that, well, of course, uh, there is much profound uh, intellectual content to Amuna, content which certainly includes, but is not limited to the Rambam, Yud Yim Likarim. But clearly, we all understand, hopefully, to a degree, experience in our own lives that uh, emuna doesn't just mean uh, subscribing to certain intellectual faith propositions in a uh, impersonal, detached way. That emuna is, is a mode of experience. It's a way of living. It should translate into perspectives, attitudes, a certain way of thinking, feeling, acting, reacting. And obviously, that becomes a much more formidable challenge to teach and transmit than something which uh, can be distilled into so many pages in a textbook. So I'd like to perhaps address, call it a few sutyas of, of Eruna, and, uh, and, and, and maybe give a few examples of not only what we can try to teach, but how to try to teach it, how to try and exemplify Emuna for our students so that they're exposed to, to Emuna, because ultimately Emuna is, is imbibed. It's not just uh, grasped intellectually. share with you just but before I begin with that just a uh, in many ways it's a very trivial memory sort of I think uh, reflecting uh, my own uh, very limited perceptions at the time I remember when I, when I was a kid many many years ago there was a, a man in, in Boston one of whose children had uh, become engaged daughter of his had become engaged. He had a uh, relationship with the Ruf, so his sense of uh, propriety and, and their inheritance dictated that, that he bring his daughter's husband and uh, introduce him to the Ruf. His older children had uh, suffered a uh, series of uh, divorces. Each of the older siblings of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, young lady who lived in the young age had uh, married and, and uh, divorced, and not especially amicably. So he came in, and obviously the normal sense of uh, excitement and enthusiasm that a parent uh, feels and uh, projects you know, upon the occasion of the engagement of a child was totally missing, and you could see the, 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 the worry etched, etched in his face. Okay. So when he left, so I've just made one comment, and he said, Yvonne Shalom has many ways of punishing a person. And, and to me, it just, again, it's, it's a trivial story, and again, it reflects a katnas hamochen on, on, on my part. But to me, it gave me a glimpse for a minute of how he viewed and experienced the world. I said, okay, so for whatever reason, the, the, the marriages hadn't uh, worked out. And, and it was a lens through which he, he saw and experienced reality. So that's something, again, which is obviously much harder to transmit. And so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll try perhaps how to expose discuss how we can expose Talmud to, towards our tools. It's very, very important that, that we feel on our own 
and that we communicate a sense of confidence and conviction in the Torah and in the truth of Torah. You know, it's, it's possible to have a muna, and yet, in, in the Yud Gimel Imamins, in, in the Siddha, so we say an Imam is about Muna Shlein. What, what do you need the, the phrase, the, the Muna Shlein? I believe. What, what's the, what's the Ben Muna Shlein? So clearly, as Chazal tells us, for instance, about Noah, whatever it really means in that context, that Miktani Amon, or Yit Ma'amun Ve'en Oman, person can believe and At Muna, a person, again, in terms of cultivating for ourselves and then trying to transmit, is an Iman and Ben Muna Shleva. Let me try to concretize what, what it is that we're talking about. One of the areas in, in which um, people have questions in at Muna, is I can, broadly speaking, relate to religion and science. Torah and science, apparent uh, contradictions between uh, something we'll, we'll find in Hazal and what modern science teaches. Now, the, the question is, is a very legitimate question. I, I, I don't think anyone here, I, I certainly don't, finds it uh, either especially cogent or even uh, intellectually honest to just have a sense of disdain for science and just be mevatal science and say, so what that science says, and then in the middle of the conversation, excuse yourself to answer your cell phone, as one is uh, debunking that uh, who cares what, uh, what science says. So that's not, it's not especially cogent, nor, nor is it uh, especially, I don't think especially honest. And that having been said, it's very important before trying to address the specifics of whatever the question is, to give, again, we'll talk about students, the same is obviously true if, if, if one were talking to the, an adult audience, to give them a little bit of a perspective or a context in, in which that question uh, is being discussed. First of all, people should have a little bit of a sense for the history of science, for all the upheavals in the history of science, all the absolute gospel truths, which are uh, now considered to be totally, totally wrong and, and uh, totally in incorrect, people should be, be given to understand that the contemporary, as, as, as far as I know, um, I didn't realize Professor Schatz was going to be here, so I thought I'd be able to. Uh, I'm writing certain of these comments without getting, uh, without getting caught on them, but the, the contemporary uh, understanding is that scientists don't even claim to be mapping out reality. They claim to be giving a model for reality, because you can't prove that uh, if something's empirical, so you can see that there's a desk here. When one posits a certain force, so the, most, the most one can say is that my theory will account for all the phenomena and all the manifestations that you see, and that it's consistent with everything. So even scientists don't claim anymore, as far as I understand, they don't claim to be telling us what reality is, but the most they say is we'll give you a model for reality, and that the hallmark of the good scientific theory is that it can be falsified, is that uh, we'll make certain predictions as to what my theory should uh, indicate what my theory should result in, and it, it lends itself to falsification. They don't claim that it lends itself to absolute verification. It lends itself that the, the philosophers of, of science speak again not so much of verification, but rather of, of falsification. So while the accomplishments of, of science certainly do command our, our respect, and certainly do legitimize the questions, often when, when people are, are rushing to defend the faith in, in the realm of Torah science, religious science, beneath the surface there's a sense that what is Torah going to answer 
to what Simon says. <coughs> Simon says that this can't be. So what is Torah got, got to answer to that? At best, the attitude and, and the approach that, that, that a teacher needs to project is, well, if you learn Chumash, and you have Shnei Ksum HaMakhishim Zayazet, you have a Pesach and Vayit, and you have a Pesach and Tzad, and it seems to be Shnei Ksum HaMakhishim Zayazet, so there's no sense of like default. What's the Pesach and Vayit going to answer to what the Pesach and Tzad says? No, there's a challenge here. There's a challenge. There's a Pesach and Vayit, which seems to indicate such and such. There's a Pesach and Pashas Tzad, which seems to indicate otherwise. They're both true. They're both sources of, of, of truth. So, is there a cause of Ashlishi? If there's no cause of Ashlishi, okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding one. But there's no sense that the Pasuk in Vayikra has to answer to the Pasuk in Parshish Tzad. There's no sense that the Pasuk in Parshish Tzad has to answer to the, to the Pasuk in Parshish Vayikra. There's an intellectual challenge here. Because two, two sources of truth, at best, that's the way that the, any question in, in Torah and the science and, and, and the parent conflicts should be addressed. And sometimes, sometimes, if, if, if we feel and, and the students pick up on it, the, the body language, the, uh, even if it's an unarticulated attitude, if there's a sense of defensiveness of, of how am I going to make the, the posuk, how am I going to make the Maimah Chazal conform to what science says, even if a person brilliantly resolves it, so sometimes I wonder whether more harm or more good has been done for, for people's emunah. So the first thing is how we approach questions. We have confidence in Torah, not in the Munah Shleimah. Does that mean that we know the answer to, to all questions? And, and on the contrary, sometimes, sometimes if, if a person, again, explaining that the, again, with, the, with, with all the appropriate uh, respect and, and acknowledgement, uh, again, for science, not only because of its uh, accomplishments, but how often clearly, uh, clearly validates it when, when medical science. So it's not rooted in any disdain for or any rejection of. But the most you can say is that it is that is that it, it poses a legitimate question. But there should be a sense again of, of, of confidence not a sense of, uh, of, of defensiveness. And even if one insists on answering all the questions, if students pick up on a sense of defensiveness, which means that the science has to be right, and it's Torah that has to be brought into conformance, it, it, it really erodes the, the, the emuna as much as it's uh, as much as it's strengthening a woman. The same is true when when, when people have questions in, in a woman which are um, generated by the fact that uh, total morality and I'm not sure whether it should be described as Western morality or immorality um, are, are, uh, are clearly out of sync. And there too, that's something which uh, sincerely troubles people. And here too, if, if, if students pick up on an apologetic approach, that, that somehow or rather the, the way I'm going to answer the question is to show you that really Torah is everything that you, with uh, all the Western influence that you have want it to be. So even if I can sell you that, that, that package, even if I can sell you that bill of goods, but again, but there's a certain attitude and there's a certain approach which, which also comes across. I don't know whether it's necessarily uh, consciously absorbed or whether it's unconsciously absorbed, but, but it will 
it, it, it will get, get absorbed. When people try to um, remake and reinvent what happens under the chuppah, so that the, so that kiddushin seems more bilateral, so that instead of it being what the Gemara kiddushin says as Amar uh, Huva Masan, that's how the Gemara kiddushin describes what kiddushin is. And a man says to a woman, I read Kudashasli, and then gives her the Kesset Kudushin. So that doesn't sit well with our Western values. So what do we do? So we ingeniously figure out that, well, we'll make the, the Kabbalah's Kenyan for the Ksuba under the Chuppah. So the Kabbalah's Kenyan for the Ksuba is the Kalash of Kona. So the Kona, in, in, the, in the event of the, in the case of the instance of the Ksuba, is of course the woman. So then that will let her give the man something, and then she'll make a, a similar declaration. So what's wrong with that is, again, it shows a sense of inferiority, that the way to address people's problems, and the problems can be real, and the struggles can be real, and genuine, and sincere, and they should be addressed, and they should be dealt with, and every sincere question is, is, a, is a good question, and the, and the legitimate question, but the answer isn't to try to bring Torah into conformance with 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 whatever it is that that, that, that uh, seems to be challenging or seems to be seems to be contradicting. Again, in the case of the religion and science, the answer may be a good one, but if the attitude is that Torah has to answer the science, here the, technically it may work. Technically, one can devise things like that, but if the answer is that, that, that what happens under the chuppah has to answer to the, the, the Western values, so it erodes that sense of an imam in the moon ashwam of the Taras Hashem to an imam Mashiach's Makesh, and uh, it, it doesn't point in, in, the, in the right direction. One of you. Um, sent uh, an, an email that, uh, that the Rashaiwitz uh, um, forwarded saying that, that one of the, um, I guess, dissatisfactions which students um, express is that often in classes and sessions dealing with questions of Amunah, questions of Makshava, so the questions are better than the answers. I assume that what the, when the students um, say that, they're referring to the fact that, that uh, often, you know, the answer seems to boil down to, we don't know. We don't know, and, uh, and, and after the time you have to believe, and, and, and that's, that's dissatisfying. Someone recently told me a, a very, very beautiful story that there was a young, I don't remember whether he was a yeshiva both or whether he was a young Abrech, and uh, he went over to, to a Pershbrun, one of the, uh, one of the, the Gedolei Shabur, famed for his uh, total, uh, total mastery of, of, uh, of Torah, and, uh, and he asked him a kasha. And the Pershbrun thought about it, and he said, I don't know. And then the question walked away very satisfied. Very satisfied. That, uh, you see, not only don't I know, but see, what happened, he doesn't know either. And the first one said to the person who, who, who was with him, who had witnessed this, uh, this yeah, exchange. Yeah, he said, but we call it 7336, Mr. Freeman, 7336, please. He said, he thinks, he says, he thinks, it is, I don't know, and my, I don't know. So the truth is that, that many discussions uh, about the uh, questions in Amuna do, do end up with we don't know. But there's a difference between, between saying, oh, we don't understand, uh, we don't understand how you can have uh, free will with Akhara's was foreknowledge. They're saying, oh, we don't understand it. 
as opposed to when the Rambam comes and tells us, you have to realize that when you're asking that question, so you're transposing onto HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're assuming that HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows the way we know. Because for us to know something, it has to be there. Right? I, I can know that there's a bottle of water here because it's there. So if something is, so then I can know it. So for me to know the future, would mean the future would have to be, would have to be fixed. Says the Rambam that by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it doesn't work that way. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't know what's outside of him, because nothing's outside of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because he's infinite. So who are your daya, who are your dua, who are daya, atzma? When all of a sudden done, did the Rambam tell us, do we understand how, how the Chir of Hafshis and the divine foreknowledge coexist? Do we understand how cold software is just and sooner? No, there's a big difference between the Rambam's I don't know and, uh, and, and our I don't know. There's an awful lot in the Rambam that ultimately really does come down to that that we don't know, but there's a ignorant I don't know. And then there's a very informed, deep, profound I don't know. And it's what, what's so important is that, that we should try on whatever level that the students who are posing the questions are to give them that deeper and more sophisticated sense of I don't know. There's nothing dissatisfying about that. If, again, to, to begin on the most elementary level, if, but it, depending upon the, uh, the sophistication of, 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 of the in question, it can go. It can go much deeper. If if a, if a student is uh, struggling with uh, why someone in his or her family of one is sick, and uh, and it doesn't seem fear, it doesn't and it doesn't and it doesn't seem right. So, what what you want to do is okay. You can just tell the. the you can just tell the student, listen, we don't know. But that's what they're telling us, but that's not satisfying. You can say, let's step back for a minute. That, that's, that's for a moment, leave, leave aside the, 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 the situation at hand. And let's, let's explore what we can expect to understand about the, the, the ways of the divine providence and what we can't. Right? Marshall Ahmad Ravadon. Let's say you have uh, parents who are parenting a, uh, a baby, a little child, maybe it's even, uh, maybe it's even a, a, a teenager. So the parent is going to say, the parent is, is, is very sensitive, and the parent is going to say, I'm not going to impose anything on my child that my child can't understand and appreciate. So when you take your one-year-old to the pediatrician for inoculations, the one-year-old most definitely doesn't understand it and doesn't appreciate it. I'm not going to impose. So, right, we would clearly say that that's not sensitive parenting. We would say that that's, uh, that that's neglect in, in, uh, in a very serious uh, form. So you try to get the, 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 the students to understand that l'chatchila, there can't be an expectation that we're going to understand everything. For us not to understand everything means that Kodesh Baruch Hu, in his uh, infinitude, is limiting himself to what we, in our finitude, can, can understand. And that's obviously preposterous. When the I don't know comes on the heels of that, on the heels of that, it is satisfying. And, and it's only when they misunderstand that I don't know, it's just, well, we don't know, and that's what faith is. That, 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 uh, so then they think it's a cop out. When it's explained to them, so it's true. It does ultimately very often end with, with, with I don't know, but you know, it should end with the first I don't know. It should end with the Rambam's I don't know, not the not the I don't know, which the um, which the the, the the Talmud came in. We talked about having uh, confidence and in, in, uh, in Torah. And, and conveying that sense of an imam in Memunah Shlema. So clearly part of that is the confidence and sense of Memunah uh, Shachamim 
that we have in in the Chachme Masora and in the Chachme Masora. Remember once, many years ago, um, when the uh, topic of the day was uh, women's fila groups. So uh, after making a presentation on on that issue, so a very well-meaning, sincere woman came up to me and she said, "Well." You know what the problem is. The problem is that all the rules are made up and interpreted by the rabbis. The rabbis obviously are interested in preserving the patriarchal uh, society and, and, uh, and, and hierarchy. So, so what, what do you expect? And I, I think, I think, if, if I wasn't misreading, I think it was said with. Uh, with a, with a lot of sincerity. Of sincerity. So, so, so I asked her, I said, did you ever meet any of the contemporary great rabbis that, that, uh, that you're talking about? I told her I had the privilege of growing up and uh, sitting at the breakfast table, at, 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 at the supper table, with such an individual. You can't begin to imagine how alien the notion of power of this or that is you know, for such spiritual giants. If only, if only, I said, try, try to go visit one of these rabbis. Try to uh, figuratively take his pulse, interact, see who the past half Amma service of their is the Rey and Heng Heng Zachon. We get to know them through, through Hamukkah. But contemporary half Amma service, I think if only the, the, the Talmudim would have exposure and appreciation to the who the half Amma service are, it translates into a tremendous sense of confidence in the Masora. And too often they're just anonymous figures. What do they need to know and understand about Hachmah and Masora? So they need to know and, and, and understand what paradigms they were of chesed and humility. And after you tell them, after that they see what paradigms they were of chesed and humility, so then they can understand also the, the, the unrivaled uh, brilliance and uh, and goodness. Most of the stories that the Rav used to tell about the Chaim are not about his goodness. Uh, about, uh, about his chesed, the, the story that uh, he used to tell that the time once came out of the uh, Besnev of the Besmedvish of Shul, the son, and uh, the, the, there was a child crying, and then he asked the little child, well, why was he crying? And, and uh, the child said, because they're playing horse, they have to take uh, turns being the horse, and then the other children get to ride on the horse and tell them to go get it up, and it's supposed to be my turn, and I don't want to be the horse. So the time said, okay, so I'll be the horse. And, and, uh, and consoles the child, and, uh, and the client gets down on, on all fours, and he was the horse, and the little kids, uh, the little kids are riding, the little kids are saying, uh, saying, saying, uh, get it up. Well, when the client, was, uh, the client married the, uh, his wife, who was in Lifshin, was the granddaughter of the Nitzit. So the Nitzit gave as a wedding present, he gave him a cup, so they should be able to have, uh, be able to have uh, fresh milk. So then his granddaughter went back to her, went back to, 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 to the Zayda and says, you know, it's impossible. Whatever you give him, he gives away the and He says, he gave away the cow also. This uh, poor lady came to him and she said, Rabbi, I have nothing for my children. So he gave her, he gave her the cow. And she said, it's not going to help you. Give us another cow, he's going to give that away also. I think this was the only time that Rukhain was ever outsmarted. So then Siv gave another cow. And he told Rukhain, this is not yours. I'm not giving you the cow, it belongs to me. He says, I'm giving you permission to milk the cow. <laughs> the cow belongs to me. You have no, uh, uh, the king and Aguf uh, is I think. If, if, if people would, would, would get to know, if our students would know who the Hatme HaMasara were, if, if stories were, again, of the past ones would bring them to life, an actual interaction and exposure of contemporary Chachmeh HaMasoda, 
if they see who these people are, that inspires a tremendous confidence in uh, in, 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 in the Nasoda. Another major area, I think, in, in trying to teach and transmit and Munoch is to try to, again, both show and by example demonstrate how Emuna, how the Yisodo Emuna translate into action, into a way of thinking, a way of speaking. Maybe just to, to give one example. Rambam writes at the beginning of the uh, Yisodia Torah, that Yisoda, Yisoda Zvamud HaChokmos is Leida Sheyeshon Motsi Rishon Mansi Tonus. So the Rambam Zafan Lodochi used to comment how the Rambam writes in the present tense that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Mansi Tonus. So not that HaKadosh Baruch Hu pressed the button in uh, Hey, Tov, She, and I, and Gimel years ago in Himsi Tonus, but rather that in the present tense HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives existence to everything that exists, right? Nothing exists uh, by inertia, because it was created so many millennia ago, but at every moment, HaKadosh Baruch Hu infuses it with existence. At every moment, it exists because of him, through him. The Chai Velashina talks in, 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 in Nefesh HaChaim. He says, what does it mean that, that, that we say every day in Bikas Krishna, it's striking, we actually repeat the phrase, that I'm the Chadish, but two of the Chol Yom Tamer Nasser Vreshis, he says with Chai Velashina, he says, again, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, unlike a uh, construction company, they build uh, they build the building, so then they go away and the building stands on its own. Here, every single moment, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has the will that, that the world continue to, to exist. So that's certainly, that the, these ideas are certainly, when we talk about the intellectual content of Emuna, are, are very, very important and, and central ideas. But they also have very practical implications in terms of one's whole demeanor, in terms of one's whole mindset. Hamachadish betul v'choyim kam and maser gracious means a, a person, everything, the entire v'ya, alachas kama v'kama, alachas v'kama, when a person thinks about himself, his existence isn't his own. His existence isn't his own. He can't, uh, he can't insure, he can't assure anything. There's a total, not in a depressing sense, but in a very real sense, there's an absolute sense of dependence in terms of, again, talking about an attitude, a, a mindset, a, 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 a way of feeling and living that these Yisraelis I mean, should translate into, practically, practically. Let's say, again, for ourselves and, and for our students, the discussion is, what are you doing over winter break? So over winter break, I'm going to visit my grandparents in wherever they live, in, 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 uh, in Eretz Israel. No such thing as, I'm going to do this. In Yitz Hashem, I'm going to do this. What's wrong? I'm going to do this. A person doesn't know if he's going to be alive in a second from now. There's no, there's no, I'm going to do this. If, if a, uh, a student hears the teacher, Always, always. Tomorrow, in Yotzah Hashem, we're going to do this. In five minutes, in Yotzah Hashem, we're going to do this. So that, that's an exposure, again, to, to Emunah being lived. It's not just Emunah being taught uh, intellectually as a subject, but it's Emunah being felt and lived. And, and it's that type of example which, 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 which rubs off. Dealing with with Inyani Yamuna, so again, both for ourselves in terms of so both in, in in terms of ourselves in terms of cultivating it, a 
as well as trying to transmit it. So again, the challenge is how how to internalize. So again, it's not just something that on a questionnaire one can check off the right box, but it's something that, that a person again it, it informs his actions, reactions, his. So how, how does one do it? So Ramchal, as you all know, writes in, in, in his introduction to Masila Sushodim, he says, you're not going to find too many Fidushim in my Seifa. He says, you know it all, and therefore what will be accomplished is only by the constant reinforcement, by learning and relearning and reviewing again and again the Seifa. So that's, that's what will be accomplished. So here Ramchal tells us the, the, the secret that one of the ways that we internalize, one of the ways that we make the transition from sort of intellectually subscribing to something. So let's say I believe in Hashgoch uh, and the way the Sefer Achim says. Kol ashe yekreihu mito ba'adra tohu siba shato ba'adav me'es Hashem ba'adru. Whatever happens to a person, so ultimately, it's because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants it to happen. And uh, the Sfasemis explains well, what's happening. The Sfasemis explains in, in, uh, in, in Parshas Vayigash. He says, on, on the one hand, uh, Yosef is uh, giving the brothers Tokacha. He's giving him to So the Spasamis explains very beautifully, and again, this is in terms of the content. Of, of, of Amuna, this certainly, uh, according to, to this understanding of Hashkaf and Pata, certainly belongs in the, in, 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 the, in, in the syllabus. That Yosef HaTzadik believed that what the brothers, the designs the brothers had against them, that Baruch Hu would have foiled had it not been decreed. Had it not been Nigzah and Ashamay, that Baruch Hu would have foiled it. But as well, who would not have allowed them to carry out their, their designs against them. They were doing it of their own free will. Hence, who allowed it to proceed. who uh, didn't, uh, didn't foil the plan. Because Yosef HaTzadik recognized that what happened was supposed to was supposed to happen to me. And that's what the, the Sefer Phoenix says in, when he gives the, the Tami Mitzvah for the the Isur of Nekoma. So we generally associate the Isur of Nekoma with that it's a corrupt nida. And the Sefer Achino says, no, theologically it's a, it's a terrible mistake. Because if a person is looking to take revenge, so what that reflects is that the person thinks that the other person is the cause of, of what happened to him. And that's not the case. So the idea is, so a person can believe it. And yet, when someone cuts me off on the road, I get all angry and get all red in the face. And I roll down the window and I start yelling at it and I start leaning on, 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 on my horn. So what happened to the, uh, everything was, was, was Nizam and Hashemayim. So again, so clearly that there's a gap here between what a person uh, subscribes to intellectually and, and what he has uh, successfully internalized. So how does a person make that transition from knowing to internalizing? So Paul tells us it's one of the ways is through constant reinforcement. That just going over the same ideas again and again and again, it's that constant reinforcement which helps us make that transition from knowing, from subscribing to intellectually, to, to in internalizing.
our students, not so much that they have a guy to and uh, in their actual life, but they don't actually think that. The question is, do, do we educate towards this um, approach of, of understanding the health practice in order to internalize the Luna or what not necessarily? Uh, Seba Achimach's approach makes it much easier for a person to make Hashem a presence in his life. And, and uh, call it, uh, you know, the, the, the Rambam's approach, it's more of a challenge. For, for, it's not impossible. I don't think there was anyone who was more uh, God conscious than, than, than the Rambam, obviously. But it's, 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 it's a more formidable challenge to feel like there's both as a presence in your life if you go with the Rambam as well and if you go with the, the, the Sefer thing as well. So, so how, how, does, how does one, again, so the Ramchal says it's done through the, uh, the constant reinforcement. So the challenge, I think, which that presents to, to, to us as Machamchem is, you know, to, to come in every day and say the same Shia is not going to is how to, how to have the same punchline, how to have the same underlying message again and again through different, uh, different venues, through different different colors, but to constantly reinforce. Sometimes because we're so focused on the intellectual and, and cognitive dimension, so we, we always have a sense, okay, we've taught this, now let's move on to something else that, uh, that we haven't taught. Taught it, they reviewed it, they put a test on it, and now, now, now let's go by it. And what Amchal is telling us is, I don't know, maybe that's a good thing in, you know, in geometry. When, you know, once, you know, we, we, we taught these theorems, now let's, uh, you know, let's, let's move beyond the isosceles <laughs> and uh, let, let's go back to it. And he says, but in, in terms of internalizing Yisrael and Samunda, you don't have to look for Chiddush. We need the constant reinforcement. So again, the challenge is how to do it but without it seeming tedious, without it seeming uh, repetitious to the, to, to the students. So it's, it comes up, the, 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 the Polish teacher has, uh, is, is reinforcing it here, the lovely teacher is reinforcing it here, and, uh, and the Gemara Rebbe is, uh, is reinforcing it here. Each one from a different angle, through, uh, through a different uh, work, a different Ratora, but to try to, to constantly uh, Constantly uh, um, reinforce. Okay, I didn't intend to talk the whole time, so maybe I'll stop a few minutes and just see if there are any uh, questions, criticisms, or you know, whatever, and just uh, open up the floor for any, any reactions. I first think that it's, it's worthwhile to have specific topics or even specific methods that Amun has been conveyed in the classes, or it might be more useful for each each rabbi or teacher to kind of just on the spot or even them individually finding out, you know, I'm going to go on a tangent today, I'm going to talk about this, or this happens to come up here, and therefore, you know, this is something that I'm passionate about, I'm excited about, and I'm going to convey to my students. Uh, 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 it certainly is, I mean, when we talk about the, the, uh, the, the, the component of, of the intellectual content of it, and so it certainly is, 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 is a syllabus of, of things that, that we would like uh, um, to, to, 
to be uh, exposed to, so, and and that probably does require some kind of you know advanced uh, planning and, and somewhat systematic. But Gamizel, how do you that? takes it, I think, in a very different way than most of us as we uh, up the Pekiyotos after after Mithra on Shabbos afternoon uh, take it. He says that the Yeras Cheto means Yeras Cheto is that a person is reductive to mitzvahs. The Rambam says the majority of mitzvahs are to rein in our, our GM, to, to rein in our, our titles and to, to get us on the, the Midah HaMimutzahs and not to be overly involved with the, the, the physical and, and materialistic. He says, the reason Chachmaso is only Mishmayemes, if Yeras Cheto is Kodemes, is because otherwise when a person hears Chachma and he sees that the implications of the Chachma just go against everything that uh, go against the, his lifestyle and everything that he enjoys and everything that he's immersed in. So then he rejects the Chachma. And, uh, and then he, he, he scorns, he scorns the, 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 the Chachma. So the, the question is, is absolutely uh, correct. That there has to be a certain, uh, you can pour and pour and pour. There has to be a people. There has to be a receptacle to, to receive it. And, and I think I think an, an effort needs to an effort needs to be made to to, to again educate uh, try to trigger a little bit of uh, reflection uh, about about the, the lifestyle and, and, and everything in it and, uh, that they should I could be more open to. Uh, that has to be that in many ways is uh, is a prerequisite for for, for, for somebody else. So I think we find the town right. Find the town right. So how how can it be that Chazal tell us call it call it says people get a lot of zman from being in and shelter and all. Why isn't it in and it's just everything Chazal said about so many different mitzvahs. He says and then you open up you open up the sefer mitzvahs. It's not there. So finally, Tal says the reason it's not there, and he says it capitalistically, different, uh, different fashas, whatever. But when the, he says the Moshe Nadar Adam, what finally Tal says is, let's say you open up a catalog from a medical school, medical school catalog, and, and you see what the first year uh, medical school students like, the second year, and you see, oh, they don't take basic biology, they don't take basic chemistry. So apparently, it's not really relevant. It's certainly not important for becoming a doctor. But how do I look? I, I look through the, the catalog uh, from, from, from all through top. No basic biology, no basic chemistry. So what's the answer? The answer is other of It's so fundamental that it's taken for granted. So Chaim Vital says that about Midas. He says that, that before you can, uh, the, the Midas are, are, the, are the foundation. He says there's no mitzvahs in, in, the, in the Torah about the most basic and elementary. There's mitzvahs to build and refine and perfect. But on the most basic elementary level, because that's the that's the foundation of, 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 of everything. So you're absolutely right. In order to to open ourselves up and, and in order to uh, to, to open uh, to them up to it, so that they need to be engaged on, on, on that level as well. They need to be engaged on again just the, the total uh, involvement and. In, developmentally or growing in Emuna um, in a way that is often very different than it is for adults. That is to say that it's much more developmental, uh, developing. Um, is this something that 
Once, once one moves beyond the, the basic belief in the Hakadosh Baruch Hu, so the, the, the belief which needs to be built and developed and cultivated the most is is, is belief in Torah, and and that happens not only through sharing of Yudah Levi's uh, approach. To, why we believe in the veracity of Torah, but part of it is the experience of Talmud Torah. And it's, it's absolutely crucial that the experience of Talmud Torah be a sweet one, be a deep one, be uh, when, when, when students learn Gemara, and, and all they come away with is that Gemara is, is so that erodes, it has to be, a, it has to be exposed again. The experience of Talmud Torah should be to, to the sweetness and the depth and the, the profundity of, 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 uh, of Talmud Torah. That experience of Talmud Torah itself has a tremendous uh, um, effect and, and influence. I remember when, when I... Um, first began uh, teaching um, almost uh, three decades ago. Um, so I, I um, a, a, a Rebbe of mine, a Gershom Zaksafam Abacha, made the following comment. He said, you know, the way a Rebbe influences Talmudim is not only with what Dibbe Musa, Dibbe Ashkafa, Dibbe Adrafi he says, but the Torah itself should be Mashkia. And, 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 and it's, it's so true that, that, again, that sense of confidence in, in, in the truth of Torah is, is in large measure linked to one's experience of, of, of Talmud Torah. And, uh, and, and uh, a, a, a Rebbe's uh, teacher's job is very much Melech Shomayim in, in exposing to that sweetness and depth and beauty and, and profundity of the uh, of, of talk. You spoke about the need to express confidence and uh, not be so defensive about it. I'm wondering if there's a... Uh, Even just to show it, not, not, not right. so much to say it, but just the way one approaches a question will be <coughs> speak it more than, than speak it. Right. I wonder if there's also a place for, for sharing fact that you also experience doubts or have experienced doubts and that for the students sometimes it can be it can create a sense of distance where you know they feel okay so fine you can say that because you believe x y and z but, but i don't and i'm here and, and you're there so that's an unbridgeable uh, un unbridgeable gap but that if legitimately they are issues that are troubling and they are issues that to, to be a role model for the fact that you can you can have these fakos without without throwing out the baby with, with the bathwater, um, is that also a, an important model to be able to demonstrate? See, there, there is there is a tension, in, uh, which you know you, you're, you're obviously intentionally highlighting. Um, on, on the one hand, you know, the, the, the argument that as you made it very, very persuasively, um, the, the, the 
counter argument is that it almost says, that, you know, if Rabbi Stein has spikes and you know, isn't moving beyond that, so I'm not going to move beyond it either. And the question is, is it too effective? And I, I don't know. I don't. Kishala uh, Atzmik. I, I would think that maybe the same thing can be achieved by validating the question. I think when one validates the question, you know, I hear the question, and, and it's an excellent question, and it's a, it's a very genuine question, and, and, and I totally understand that, 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 uh, that, that uh, you know, why you're grappling with it, and, and why it bothers you. And I think that that closes the gap you know, when, when the question is genuinely validated, and yet, Maybe it also leaves the, the teacher, you know, also as, as, as a role model who's one step ahead. So therefore, it's something for me to uh, look up to. And, and if, if the teacher comes down, you know, to my level, in order for me to relate to him, then who am I looking to, uh, you know, to give me guidance of how to get higher up on the ladder? So maybe the same thing can be achieved. By, by validating the, 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 the question. And the same thing is true in, uh, in, in parenting. You know, if your two-year-old can't find his favorite stuffed animal, so it just has to be validated. He doesn't have to... I think you're 100 percent correct that, that you know if, if, if we're seeing issues in ninth grade, um, you know, we can't say they're not mature enough and we'll wait till 11th grade, because by 11th grade, you know, maybe they're further away and then it's going to be much more difficult to reach them. So the answer is, like with everything in Torah, I don't think that will be dark I don't think that, that, that uh, ninth grade is, is too young to talk about the money. It may very well be that you're yeah, not gracious in first grade and you're not gracious again in eighth grade. So hopefully, hopefully in eighth grade we learn it with a little bit more depth than we did in first grade. But the fact that, that in, in first grade we're not ready for the Ramban's Chomer uh, Yuli in, in, in first grade, but there's still a level on which you can. And, and I think you're entirely right that there's no reason that, that, that you know, that, that all such discussion should be held in abeyance. It just has to be done, you know, in an age and, and the, you know, stage an appropriate way. As with other areas of Torah, again, how much they're ready for us in that, you know, the, 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 the teacher, in terms of, but as with so many other, basically, almost all areas of Exotheric areas of Torah, it can be done on different levels, and, and, and therefore it should be done in as well. Absolutely. Before ninth grade, also. I don't mean, know that it has to, I know that it's necessarily limited to uh, it's the exclusive province of the high school. Just one more question. One thing I noticed this year, perhaps more than other years, is that I find a lot of 
questions of the moon out with kids. You know, we have boys in Shiva, with boys who have strained or difficult connections to their own biological body. Um, so it's really a two-part question. The first is, does Rebbe have any suggestions specifically in such an instance? Yeah. And first of all, does Rebbe think that there's truth to this, or is it just, uh, is it just is it, in the Rebbe's experience, has it been that, that, that these things can sometimes lead to when a question B, what to do about them, C, just in, in general, when kids do present with any questions in the Rebbe's experience, or I start to raise one possibility that it's really that they just don't want to really commit. What are the other reasons that people you know, do present with basic and more questions in the whole Yiddish time? What fact that we can do that? Maybe the third is too broad. Just leave it the first to try and get away with too much. Um, okay, I, I, I should have written that. So you were a little bit <laughs> I, I, I get to which one I down. There's no question that the poem can and, and, and does generate questions in the moon, and it does so very, in, in very different. One way in which it happens, I remember my, my, uh, my first year teaching, I, I taught uh, um, 11th grade in, uh, in, in MTA. And uh, so I had, had a student, and uh, we came to discuss uh, questions that were bothering me. And, and, and we just didn't, uh, it, it didn't add up. I didn't think he even really understood the questions he was asking. Uh, he was sort of uh, parroting the right words of the questions, but I didn't get the impression that he really understood the questions enough to be uh, enough to be bothered. So sure enough, he had certain personal issues in his life, and what happens very commonly is that because Emuna, because Torah is is uh, front and center, when, when we have Problems so often they get projected onto uh, onto onto Emun. Emun is supposed to be the defining quality of my life. I'm unhappy, so that means I have problems with with, with Emun. And that's sort of the, the, the unconscious uh, um, progression. In, in in reality, again, the, the the issue often, or at least the certainly the genesis of the issue, often has got nothing to do with, with questions. Sometimes what happens is that's that's present long enough that they take on a life of their own, and then they they uh, sort of like a secondary infection. Then they take it become questions in in, in Luna as well. E either way, either way, the, 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 the students have to be dealt with on, on both levels. I mean, even if it's just projecting. They still have to be answered on the level on which they think that they have the, the on which they think they have the problem. But uh, but also, if, if that's the case, one wants to try to get to what the underlying uh, you know if their if their problems in the moon are really are just projecting because they're angry about what's going on at home. So obviously, one wants to try to get them you know uh, the help to, to deal with that. So I think that's one one in a way. Another way that problems can you know, move and come from the home um, one of the biggest turnoffs of Islam is if the if one's primary exposure to it, which is the home front, if one thinks that it's inconsistent or even hypocritical of one of Islam. And and it's it's very, very uh, as, as, as parents, it, it's very scary just how uh, insightful and how astute children are in picking up on parental inconsistency and, and parental uh, Islam hypocrisy. And that's another way in, in, in which, you know, that, that there ends up being a correlation between well, what's happening at, at home and uh, what then gets manifested Again, yeah, there too, sometimes it takes on a life of its own, and also ultimately, 
one wants to try to get the, 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 the Talmud to, to recognize, you know, that maybe he's being too harsh in his judgment, or maybe he's not being too harsh in his judgment, but this, this is just, you know, an unfortunate, uh, that, that it's not a reflection of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of Torah itself. Thank you so much. Um, hope we will continue this conversation. Um, or just get up or whatever. Um, then I'll stop and close up and now.